Welcome to section 11.6. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, what we're going to talk about is corrosion. More specifically, we're going to talk about corrosions that happen with metals. So let's go ahead and take a look at a section of our standard reduction potential table. What you guys will see is that there are a whole bunch of metal ions, and you'll see that they have a negative redox potential. So if I were to go ahead and reverse this reaction, so saying I have the metal and I'm going to make ions, the potential for that reaction is going to be positive. Now, what you will note is that if we take a look at oxygen in the presence of a little bit of water, that's also a positive potential. So two positive potentials added to each other, well, that makes a positive cell potential, and a positive cell potential means it's going to be a spontaneous reaction. And this is a characteristic of metals. They are going to oxidize in the presence of oxygen and water. Now, sometimes this is a desirable effect. So, for example, a lot of statues are made out of copper and bronze. When copper goes ahead and oxidizes, it becomes this bright green color, and this is sometimes a desirable effect. For example, the Statue of Liberty, it used to look like a penny in color, uh, but because it oxidized, it turned into that iconic green that you see nowadays. So when we have a corrosion or an oxidation that we think is desirable, we usually call that patina. And so another place where we like to have patina is some of our flatware. If you have true silverware, meaning it is made out of silver, if you guys go ahead and handle it, the sulfur in your skin oxidizes it and it becomes kind of this warm yellow color. So this is a real cheap way to go ahead and get this gold color. Now you don't want your silverware to oxidize too much or you guys will get these black spots and that's kind of undesirable. And that's when you guys got to polish your silverware and hopefully you can retain that nice warm gold color. Uh, corrosion is a big problem with our infrastructures. If you have metal bridges or metal fixings, you don't want to rust that away and have it get eaten away. So there are techniques to try to preserve our metal infrastructure. One way is to do a process called galvanization. Now, what you're going to do with galvanization is you're going to apply a protective zinc coating. Now, if you guys walk around some street lights or metal fixtures out in the open, what you guys might see is kind of this weird sputtering pattern on that metal surface. And that is a coating of zinc. And the idea here is that zinc is more likely to oxidize than something like iron. So iron is going to go ahead and be the structural component. Zinc is going to be the protective coating, and because zinc is easier to oxidize, I'm going to sacrifice my coating, i.e. the zinc is going to get oxidized instead of the iron. Occasionally, you have to reapply your zinc coating, and that is going to protect your metal infrastructure. Now, another way to go ahead and protect iron or steel from rusting is to use something called stainless steel. So let's go ahead and take a look at regular steel. Now what happens with regular steel is that it gets exposed to air or oxygen and it goes ahead and rusts. And that rust is the iron oxide. So you might see that orange color. And one of the problems with rust is it's a flaky material. So what happens is I oxidize my iron. It makes this orange flaky material. This orange flaky material flakes off and now I have an exposed surface of iron. And so I can continue eating away at my iron and eventually I'm gonna damage the structural integrity of my iron or steel. Now what stainless steel does is it adds a little bit of chromium to my iron or stainless steel. Now what happens here is the chromium is going to oxide. Now instead of making a flaky material, Chromium oxide, the byproduct of chromium oxidation, is a clear sticky material. And so what happens is that when chromium oxidizes, it makes this protective layer and air is blocked from reaching a new surface of iron or stainless steel. 
And so in this way, I get to see my stainless steel because it's nice and clear, that chromium coating, and I can go ahead and protect it from further damage. All right, gentle people, that is all I have for Chem 1B. I want to congratulate you on making it thus far. I know this is one of the toughest chemistry classes in the series, and I'm glad you made it this far. I want to wish you good luck with everything and have an enjoyable break. And remember to stay safe, Chem 1B.